It's not easy flying inwards. There's lots of stuff around, lots of visual data, lots of things. And so making it easy for yourself is really important. I've got six tips on how to fly in woodland and these should help make really nice, beautiful, cinematic footage. I've come out this evening because the light was beautiful and the other day I drove past here and thought I really need to film those. Before the sun disappears fully I'm gonna get the drone out and I thought I'd show you guys how I use a drone to get beautiful and I feel a bit cringy saying this word but cinematic footage using the drone. I want to essentially show how, how we use it on big blue chip BBC pro productions like Planet Earth and, uh, and the programme that I've been working on recently, Green Planet, um, to, to get amazing, beautiful footage uh, that, that you expect from these big landmark series. So, uh, so yeah, I, I suppose it's best to get, get going and, uh, and get the drone out. So, making sure to stay on the path. I'm going to uh, set the drone up quickly. I'm losing the light, so I'm not going to film it. Um, but get this set up and then film and then chat to you guys later. Here are my Tutty's top tips. Is that a bit cringy? Well, I've got five tips anyway. Some are to keep the drone safe and some are to get beautiful cinematic shots when flying within woodlands. And it's, it's quite a tricky thing to do. The first thing is make sure that your return to home is set to hover if the signal's lost. You're flying within trees and if it decides to come home, it's probably gonna hit something. So that is firstly and most importantly, do that, make sure it's all turned off. Tip number two, use tripod mode. Normally, when you're up above the trees or flying in wide open spaces, the speed that you go at doesn't really matter that much. And actually going quickly helps you travel distances and get these, these big sweeping shots. In trees, it's a bit different. And that's why I recommend using tripod mode. Tripod mode really slows the drone down. Slowing down gives you much more control and makes it much less likely that you're gonna hit anything. So that's one major benefit of tripod mode when flying within woodland. But the second thing is that it just makes everything look so much better. And the reason for that 
is because there is so much stuff, there's so much parallax, and so moving quickly is just, so there's so much information coming at you, and it doesn't feel very beautiful, very cinematic, and so slowing down and using tripod mode to slow down really helps with that. My third tip, turn off obstacle avoidance. I know that that sounds ridiculous, especially as you're inside of woodland and there are so many obstacles. There's trunks and branches and bits sticking up from the ground, but that's exactly why you need to turn it off. The drone is quite cautious and it senses stuff that all around it, it senses branches above, it senses trees in front, trees off to the side, even trees behind it. And while that is useful normally, especially if you're caning it around and there's a, some unexpected tree in front of you, you're in a woodland, you know there's going to be trees, and so the fact that you're flying slowly, you're flying in tripod mode, helps you to have the confidence that you're not going to hit anything. Another thing is, it also screams at you, and it's so hard to concentrate on the drone and also the shot while you've got the drone just beeping at you, beeping at you, and it does it constantly, especially in a woodland like this where it's quite closed and tight. Turn obstacle avoidance off. It sounds counterintuitive, but it helps you get much better shots. Tip number four is use visual positioning systems. The reason for that is often the trees will interrupt the, the GPS signal that you're getting, especially in dense woodland. The visual positioning system helps on top of that to keep the drone steady. And I've flown the Inspire in woodland, I've flown the Mavic, I've flown the Phantom 4. The Mavic is so much better than the Inspire. It's really solid in 3D space. And so the visual positioning really helps with that. However, especially where you're some, somewhere like this and you're flying close to the bluebells, you still do get a little bit of drift. It's really frustrating. And usually the lower to the ground you are, the more pronounced it is. Tip number five. This is how you make all the footage cinematic. It's not a setting on the drone, it's a way of thinking. The drone is essentially a posh tripod. It's a camera, but it can move. So a bit like in cinema, they use dollies, they use sliders, they use cranes. In wildlife filmmaking, we use cable dollies. They're the tools that they use in cinema to get these beautiful moving shots. And you have to think of the drone like a dolly or like a cable camera or even like a crane. Generally, it's just flying really simply. It's pushing forwards, pulling backwards and side to side movements. You can also do rotates, but rotates I'd use more in a woodland if you want to pick out one particular tree. In a spectacle like this, it's more just about the spectacle, so there's no one particular focal point. So I think the slides, and particularly the pull backwards, is a real, real nice move. Tip number six goes hand in hand with tip number five. Pick a line and just fly straight down it. This woodland's quite tight, but you can still pick lines. So there's, there's actually one just down there, there's another one over through behind me. And so you just have to see a line that you know that the drone will be able to go through. The wider and more open the forest, the easier this is. And obviously the smaller and tighter the trees are together, the harder it becomes. And especially if you've got lower branches like this, or even over there, there's a couple of branches of fallen trees that are sticking up from the ground you have to be careful of but if you can find a hole a gap between the trees that you can fly through then that that's what you have to do you find it and you just go in a straight line and what i like to do is i go forwards 
and then come straight backwards again and then do the same route rotate through 90 degrees and get a sideways slide so you go sideways through and then sideways back again that will get you a load of different shots from just one straight path it doesn't need to be too long because you're not going very fast and you still get this because there's trees everywhere you get this really nice parallax it's not hard but you get really really nice results from it I'm going to throw in an extra tip and that is film above your shutter speed so film in slight slow motion so I I'm in Pal Land in the UK and we film at 25 frames a second. I record in 30. That just reduces not only the speed that the drone moves at, but you see the leaves and anything that moves, especially when you're close to the ground and you have the, the wash off the, the propellers, it takes that movement in the leaves and the, uh, and the bluebells and it makes it just slightly, slightly slower and a little bit more magical. And so that is my sort of secret sauce. You put that on and it just adds that extra je ne sais quoi, that extra magic. I hope that has been useful. I'd say go out, fly your drone in the trees, don't be scared. I mean, if, if you're brand new, don't do it. If you're happy using your drone in big open spaces and you feel like you're under control, it's an amazing place to fly drones. And the results that you can get are stunning. I'm so glad I came out and, and witnessed this and then got to enjoy it. So if you've got bluebells, go and see them, go and enjoy them. And um, until next time, just enjoy the wildlife around you. See ya.